Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. Howdy all, to all of my lovely ladies and genitals, I mean gentlemen. Okay, so, show you what I'm working on right now. And, gonna do a couple different things here, and just kind of showcase some of it. Um, okay, didn't do it in this one, but okay, we'll do it. So, we have our character, and... I've shown how to set up the Cindy Studios characters about 143,000 times, so I won't show that in this little tutorial. Um, what we see here on the ground is... Well, we also have the ability to change to first person. We need to make a few changes so we don't see through ourselves, but whatever. Um, this right here is just going to launch me up in the air, and yay, I'm falling. That's all it is. It's going to throw me up in the... into just teleport me to a location in the air. That's it. But I want to parachute. So, when I get up here, I'll hit the R key and I can parachute. Got the parachute. Slow down when I'm falling. And when I hit the ground, it goes away. Now, I can't do it whenever I'm on the ground. If I jump, I can deploy it and... Well, we'll have to fix this. So, you can't just do a Rico here from, um, yeah, just cause. But when you hit the R key, it will deploy the parachute, and it automatically undeploys when you hit the ground. You can also undeploy while you're in the air, and fall to the ground. So, simple enough, the animation's not perfect, but that's something that you can sit there and tweak, and I'll show you how to do that as well. Alright, ignore this stuff right here. What we've done is, if you notice, if you have the Polygon Battle Royale pack, if you don't have it, get your ass to the, the, the store right now. Buy it. Just do it. And you'll love it. Um, anyway, so we've got our characters. I'm just using the um, the Mercenary Mail. And it's in the attachments, there are packs. And there's some more tweaks I'll have to do to the system so that, it, you know, it'll work better for other reasons, but for right now, we're not worried about it. We just have that. I've added the pack in, and if you look in the props, then you scroll down, there's two different parachutes. You got this guy, which is for the player, and you got another one, which is right here, which would be for cargo. We're going to use this one, the parachute for the character, and let's actually go into the, the player character, and I'll show you what I've done. Now, I've got to clean it up, got to do a few other things in here. Um, Okay, so essentially I've set up a, a key binding for the R key, and this is just for this player base. And if you don't know how to do that, right click somewhere, just type in keyboard space R, and then oh, there it is right there. And now I get that node. I've run a flip flop so that I can turn it on and off. I have turned on, or I've made a, a couple different things here, which is is falling and is parachuting. Just two simple boolean uh, that are going to be accessed in two different ways, in two different locations. So, run the key press, the flip-flop, so we can do it once and get one result, do it again, and basically undo that result. So, what we've done here is, in the viewport, there's our character, um, ignore the camera. I don't know why it does that, but it still works fine. Uh, we have the pack and the parachute, and what I've done is I've selected the mesh, I went to the attachments, I selected the bag that I wanted, and then went back into my character, add component, and when you select static mesh, you can see that the uh, static mesh is already there. So whenever I did that, I just renamed it to pack. And if you scroll down on the details panel, there is a under rendering it says visible. I've unchecked that box so that it is no longer visible. I did exactly the same thing but whenever I did that I also told it to attach to spine 3 and I rotated it so it looked just right and positioned it so it looked good and it moved with the character so it's set up on spine 3. Same exact thing on the parachute I just set it up to attach to the mesh by selecting the mesh then add a component static mesh and then okay there you go attach it to the parent socket by clicking the magnifying glass picking the one you want which is spine 3 and there you go 
and make sure you uncheck visible on that one compile and save so now you have a reference here to your pack and your parachute so that you can then from the branch node you create you're asking is falling I'll show you how you get is falling here in just a minute so once you you find out you are falling then you want to get a reference to your pack and your parachute and all you have to do is just left click on them drag them in and drop them into the uh, the, the event graph and connect both of them to the target check here for visibility so you're turning visibility on you're setting the you're telling the the variable here set is parachuting and all you have to do is just hold down the alternate key left click and drag it in here and you get a set node if you wanted to get node you hold down the control key left click and drag it in and you'll get a get you'll get a get does that make sense so you're you're saying yes you are perishing you is parachuting set gravity scale to 0 0.1 this slows your gravity down so you're gonna slow down and and fall a little bit slower get a reference to your mesh and then type in uh, the, for the node play animation um, let's actually turn on looping see if that actually works for me so that um, it'll actually play this animation and it will constantly loop I'm going to do basically the same thing in reverse for the B node here but this time you're going to get is parachuting so if you are if you is parachuting true then you want to get your reference to your parachute now you can actually grab these right here so you only have one set it's still gonna work and make sure you have that unchecked so you're turning off the visibility of your in fact you can actually grab all of this control C and control V and just copy and paste it in so now at this point you're unchecking new visibility to unchecked is parachuting to unchecked gravity scale you set to one and then set animation instance class and you make that to be your unarmed animation or you can create another variable which would be uh, your current animation um, so if you look at your your mesh your animation class you could set up your own variable to say okay it's gonna be this is my animation class and if you're using like armed unarmed rifle pistol whatever it will know and you can set it up to go back to what you were doing before but I find it's just better to go ahead and go back to your unarmed class for your instance or your animation instance so that's good now to make it undeploy what I've done is I have created this which is simply a custom event what I have to do is right click and custom event just start typing in custom event and then hit enter and then type in whatever name you want I'm gonna delete it I called mine landed now there is another um, built-in one event on landed and I didn't I couldn't I didn't get this to work on my first try um, I could always come back to this um, hit result and break hit result and you could do all kind of stuff like that but for now and I'll probably come back and I'll rework the system to work off of that but for now what I've done is on the event tick and this is why I want to get rid of that system so I don't want to have the event tick so I'll come up with another with that one for right click land event on landed so I'll end up coming up with a system based off of that you can break your hit results and hit you know you do whatever you gotta do but I'll I'll figure that one out later and I'll, I'll come back to it on another video but for now this was just a simple system just to get it working what we've done is from our custom event called landed we get a reference to our character movement just drag it into the map or the uh, event graph and from there you get the um, is moving 
on ground would be that one right there so it knows that we just hit the ground and we're, we're able to move on the ground so we set our branch node and connect these two here and if we are on the ground we're going to go ahead and set visibility of our pack and our parachute to not visible we're going to uncheck the set or set um, is parachuting to no set our gravity scale back to one and set our animation instance class or our anim instance class to unarmed so that's that it's very simple to be able to get the is falling I created this first and then I went to my animation blueprint for this my unarmed animation blueprint and at the end of everything that I've got here and this is the same basic third person animation blueprint these are all the stuff that's in the, that I just reorganized it to make it a little bit neater for me to look at at the end of it I've added in this cast to my player character I added a branch node and I'm telling it you know, as player base I'm getting is falling and I can set is falling to true or false based on whether or not I am in the air so that's all I've added to my third person animation blueprint and it works just lovely so we'll hit play again so now if we hit jump we can jump all day long and everything's normal I come over here and I'm falling hey, it's normal but whenever I go over here now and I start falling I can hit the R key and it slows me down and I'm doing an animation so how do we get that animation you can see it sets my animation back to normal again to get that animation all that I did was in my animations for unarmed which was just my third person animation blueprint grabbed a reference to third person jump loop copy that over to my animation other folder and I'm gonna copy there and we'll rename this to I is shooting I is parachuting your your parachuting what you call it whatever you want but this is the animation that you get what you can do is you hit pause go back to your first frame I'm just left clicking and drag around right there I'm gonna grab his thigh L I'm gonna rotate it down get his lower leg rotate that up a little bit and we'll grab this lower leg and we'll make it turn a little bit let's grab his foot and you, know, you can set it up however you want to for your feet for your arms um, you definitely want to play around with it to get it just right you're gonna have to fidget around and that's exactly what I did was I just changed the rotations and I rotated the hand and kind of pulled it back a little bit and then just kind of copied the same thing you can see it, his hand looks a little bit weird just keep playing with the animation moving the, the position around get it to wherever you want it and you where you think it might be okay then come over here and hit key and then hit apply now if you hit play you can see he's doing the animation based off of how you configured him for that first one he tries to continue the rest of his animations based off of that key animation so we'll save that and close it let me go back in here and hit play and see it's not perfect but you know what it's close with mine I could do it again I hit pause scroll all the way back take this hand let's move it out a little bit and actually move this one in a little bit hit key and apply save and that's just a rough form of how you can go through and set up a basic animation that'll work you could change different frames like if you go to the the center of it hit pause 
You see his arms are moving up and down. I mean, you could change different key animation points, and you decide, okay, from here, I want him to, you know, do whatever, and just mo make your modifications. You can trim it out. You can do whatever you want, but that's cool. It works. Now, another thing you could do here is you could add in a matinee actor of the airplane flying over. But here's the thing, is when you go to the vehicles, all right, and you go to your plane, you just drag that static mesh in there, and let's go ahead and take a look at it. There's no wheels, so if you want to set it on the ground, well, how are you going to set it on the ground with the wheels down? But the wheels aren't down. And how do you get in? Because the ramp's not open, and I want to get inside, and that kind of stuff. So, um, what I did, and I thought I already had this set up. Let's, let's actually take a look at another map really quickly. Um, let's get rid of you for now. Go to maps, and yes, yes, go ahead and save all. This was a map that I was just kind of piddling around with. It's nowhere near close to even being done. But to give an example of how you can set it up to where the plane is open so you can go inside of it. Come on. This is kind of a large map. Um, it doesn't have any real textures to it just yet to speak of. But as you can see, I've got the wheels down. I've got the ramp open. So if you hit play... I can walk over here, walk inside the aeroplane, walk up here by the cabin. So if you want the airplane like this on the ground, I'll show you how you can do that. And really easy. And if you want to set it up to, to simulate that it's flying through the air and you want the, the door open, you can do it that way as well. So let's go back to our test map. I just wanted you to see how I've got this one set up. Go back to test map. So, okay, we've got this. And I don't remember where I put it, so give me a minute to. Okay. I created another static mesh. And as you can see, I have the wheels down and the, uh, the ramp down. So, to be able to do that, um, couple different things here. Let's go back to the um, the vehicle and I'm going to go to the skeleton. So now with the skeleton yes, yes, whatever, apply to asset. I didn't change anything, schmuck. Uh, we can actually come over here and Let's make a new one. And I don't want the wheels down for this one. So I want the cargo door 2. I'm just going to select that and then I'm going to eh, let's break it down like 35 degrees. And then cargo door 1. Let's raise it up. Now you can tell if you've gone too far because it'll stick to the model. So there we go. Now that's all we really need. It's simulate that it's flying and the door is open. Now, if you wanted to go through it a step farther, you could actually create an animation system for it and that kind of stuff. But now that I've got this, I want to make a static mesh. I wonder how I do that. Oh, wait, there's a big-ass button right here that says Make Static Mesh. So now I go over here to my asshole or assets and... I'm going to do, uh, let's see, C130 door open. It don't matter. And I'm actually going to go to my mesh folder because it is a mesh. And I'm going to go ahead and select OK. It says selectly um, created. So I can close this, go to my my mesh folder, my mesh folder. Right there. And you can see I got C130 door open. 
So let's actually go ahead and put this in the map and I'm going to go to 0, 0 and 1000. Now if we hit play, eh, it's in the air. Oh, wait a minute. Um, 2000. All right, so the next thing I want to do is, now you would want to go ahead and create a custom collision that would work with the static mesh. The correct way to do this would be to export it, create a static mesh, and that kind of stuff. However, for expedience, I'm going to do what makes everybody cringe, is use complex as simple. I just want to go ahead and just show this as working. So if we look, the selection arrow is here for that. But if I select here, that carries me to 2000. So we'll just make some changes here to the airplane so I can teleport to inside of it. Well, we'll try to 2500. So basically is I, I want a, a, a teleport system that's going to put me there. And if you can't figure out how to get the correct altitude, grab a sphere, grab something, put it in there, and if you grab a sphere, look, 2685, we have the altitude right there. So now all we got to do is select it, and 2685, hit play, hey, look, we teleported the inside of the airplane. So now we can actually come over to our airplane and we are going to jump out and parachute. And as soon as we land, I'll show you again, completely hands off that it works. So this is just going to be our teleport to get back into our airplane. We, okay, as soon as I jump out, nothing, because I didn't hit the key. All right, so now whenever I jump out, all right, hands off, and you can see automatically undeployed the parachute. That I have really other um, talented other appendages that actually did it, but you know what, it works. So if you're setting up battle, battle royale, you'd want to set this up as a matinee actor to be flying across your map, and as soon as it gets to the um, the area where it's safe for you to jump out, then it could um, set a variable to tell everybody in the airplane that it's safe to uh, to bail out and then okay everybody's standing here at the door I'm ready to bail so there we go so that's it that's how you can create a simple parachute system a simple static aircraft that's in the air now if you want to make it work there's plenty of tutorials out there for doing matinee actors that's probably what I would do is set up a matinee actor so that it actually moves I mean, there's other things like, okay, the propellers aren't moving. Oh, no. Well, if you want the propellers to move, then what I would suggest doing is creating a blueprint. But the problem is you're going to have to create your own animation system for it. It's not as simple as making a ceiling fan where you can just add a rotating movement to that. Um... Sorry. <coughs> You're going to have to come up with an animation for that one. I'm not going to create an animation right now for it, but to get you on the right path for that, go to your vehicles, go to your skeleton for the airplane, and what you're going to have to do is come up with... Since you got your skeleton, you got your prop. you got four different props here that are already um, okay that's a minor problem all right city studios prop one and two is in the same location so is three so one and four Okay, one, two, three, 
four. So only four is working correctly. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. Cinti Studios, you got to fix that. I will let them know as well. Um, vehicle plane prop one, two, three are not correct and need to be positioned. Four is in a correct position. So this should be four, this should be three, two, and one. So that's something that needs to be fixed in a in an update. But you would have to go through and select those and create an animation based on that. Alright guys, thanks for watching and we will see you soon.